Hi, everybody. Do you hear me well? Yeah? Really happy to be here. Uh, I hope that you have an amazing experience here at CC. As a Parisian, I'm really happy to see all this community around here. Uh, today, we are going to talk about how to leverage blockchain in the music industry. Um, so first of all, I would like to ask a simple question. Who here uh, owns any kind of music-related tokens? Wow, that's just a few. That's why we're here, so I'm glad to have you as an audience, guys. Um, so. Without more waiting, we need to admit that music is not as profitable as before, obviously. Uh, what do we mean by that? It's simple. Since the streaming platform has raised, uh, like the business model of music has really struggled to reinvent itself. And uh, actually, hear me well on that, established artists and global stars are really profitable, without no doubts. But all the mid-level artists that you are listening to every day struggle to find a way to make a living with their art. So this is the first, first issue which is really important. Secondly, live revenues are not enough. You need to know that 90% of an artist's income stream comes from live concerts and merchandising. Since the COVID and the several lockdowns, artists just realized that they could not be such as the dependent of one revenue stream. So we definitely need to find something to uh, diversify their incomes. In the meantime, music has never been so much played and consumed around the world. Uh, like you, you should know that in the 90s, uh, a regular listener would be used to listen to 20 to 30 artists per year. But since 10 years, the trend has radically changed, and now you are listening to 200 to 250 artists per year. So how do you do to create a kind of relationship with them? How do you do to be kept in the loop? And uh, this is, we're going to see that with blockchain it is possible. To answer such a demand and to answer such a trend, artists have never produced and published so much tracks. Uh, so you need to know that now playlisting is really critical for them. Uh, like if you are not playlisted, you will struggle to find an audience. And that's why they are producing more and more tracks each year. Uh, 10 years ago, artists were used to release an album every two years. Now they are releasing on average 10 tracks per year. And uh, that's their way to growing an audience and to find profitability. But like it's really a struggle. and. Uh, Actually, it's not profitable because you have a huge cost associated with this trend. So this is our observation. The music industry is economically broken, but it's also socially booming. And uh, the good news is that uh, in every industry, when it, it is socially booming, uh, you have a bright future in front of you. So what should we do? We could talk to the streaming platforms. Uh, we could ask them to reinvent themselves. But uh, since they are in a price war and they are in growth mode, uh, they are not going to change everything about how they are uh, paying artists for their music. So we definitely need them as a booster for artists. But I think that the, the, the answer in the artist revenue is not in the streaming platforms. Uh, we could also work with the record labels, but actually they already have a really controversial model. Uh, it's really hard for them to reinvent themselves. Uh, all their revenues are uh, in, in a major part based on uh, an older catalog and the old stars uh, in the music industry. So we should, it should be better if they keep at what they are doing at the best, uh, which is developing artists artistically and economically. So obviously, we need to leverage blockchain to engage fan bases, and uh, that's why we're here today. And uh, I will show you how. Um, at Bolero Music, we have built an ERC20 smart contract on Ethereum, and uh, actually, we are based on Polygon today. Um, what it means for artists, it helps them to monetize their fan base. It helps them to grow a significant additional income, and it also keep them artistically free while extending their audience. So it's a really a smart way for them to grow as an artist. 
We also have built an ERC7021 con smart contract. Uh, what it means for them is that obviously you all know about NFTs. Uh, now artists on Borio Music are able to mint NFTs and sell them. But what we have done, and we think it's a significant improvement, is that we have built four core market standards for them. Um, what it means also is that it's difficult for an artist and, and, and a team to project themselves with the NFTs because basically an NFT can be whatever they want. But when you have a lot of content as an artist, with these four core standards, you are now able to see how you can monetize some tracks and some content that were not meant to be monetized on the traditional streaming platforms. Obviously, it's easier said than done, and uh, there is a lot of work to do. So we are going to see what are the roadblocks to adoption. Uh, we have a great community here. Uh, all the people here are really invested in the development of blockchain and Ethereum. But when you ask someone who is outside this community, it's really like difficult for them to project. So he, here are a few roadblocks uh, so that everyone is uh, like concerned about this issue. Uh, First of all, artists in the major part are skeptical. What it means for that is that uh, not every artist is really innovative. They are uh, sometimes really under pressure and they need to, be, to have some reassurance about what it brings for them. Um, with blockchain, we need to explain to them that they will find a new way to grow an audience and they will find a new way to monetize their audience. And uh, since any kind of tokens are not related to uh, phonographic rights, it's really simple for them to step in. They are not constrained by any legal uh, constraint. Furthermore, artists tend to shy away from any financial market aspect. Uh, if you ask a regular artist, he doesn't want to become the new hot stock, the new Amazon stock to be traded on uh, on the Wall Street, but obviously there's a lot of money uh, to, to make in this space. So uh, it is safe to say that we need to show them that it's an amazing space for them to bring new experiences and new kind of loyalty to the fans. So that's a nice way to squeeze this um, constraint. Um, this is one of the most <laughs> talk topic uh, on uh, the music rooms on Clubhouse uh, <laughs> during this spring, like the legal vacuum regarding NFTs. Uh, obviously, if you sell a multi-track uh, file as an NFT to someone, maybe he will be able to commercially exploit it. So how do we do with that? How do we manage the relation with record labels, distributors, editors, publishers uh, regarding this concern? Uh, what we have been doing with Body or Music is that we have set two kinds of standards. You have the first one, which is the MP3 track. Uh, you don't have any possibility to exploit it commercially, but it's just based on digital scarcity and the subjective value that the user uh, assigned to it. But you also have the multi-track uh, file and if someone sell you the multi-track file with a copyright session, maybe you will be able to exploit it commercially. Uh, so we need to bring like new relation with all the syndicates and all the rights management agencies that we have in a few countries. Uh, for instance, here in France we have the SASM and the SASM doesn't allow uh, such a thing. So artists are protected by the law. Like in any cultural industry, influential leaders must validate the technology and uh, we definitely need opinion leaders and influencers to take on this subject. So it's really difficult also because, as you know, uh, sometimes crypto has a bad reputation, uh, unfortunately, in some different environments and like the old executive in this industry are really not keen on the crypto economy. So. Uh, with the opinion leaders and with the influencer, we will be able to reverse back this trend. And uh, finally, artists must ensure the evangelization of token. What it means, uh, as I've told you, outside the crypto community, people need to be like reassured about the value behind the token and to really understand what is the utility of the token and the NFT. So we need artists to be educated enough about this topic and uh, to bring like easy to use feature and easy to use platform. That's what we are trying to build at Bolero Music. 
So thank you for listening. It was really quick because we have another talk, but uh, I'd love to have your question and comments, so feel free to share. Um, just a little news here, we just raised funds, so we are hiring in product engineering and marketing positions, and uh, our core mission is quite nice. We just want to help artists and teams to make a better living from their art. So if you like this mission, join us. Any question, guys? Yep. Thanks a lot for the talk. I have a question regarding the management of moral rights. So especially in the French law, for instance, an artist has uh, an indefinite um, control over the work of art, not commercially, but about the essence of the work of art. So how would you, do you manage that? So to give you an example, if as an artist I mint something on your platform and then 10 years from now uh, um, someone does something to my uh, piece of music that um, makes it so that it, it's uh, not according to the nature that, from which it originated, I, I can oppose this in the French law. So how do you, do you manage this? Uh, well, um, thanks to our smart contract, NFT smart contract, we are able to track all the modification and we are also able to use the EPFS uh, file system. So we are able to see what kind of edits or modification was done on the file. So we will always be able to relate the piece of file that you provide in the first place to the NFT so that if someone uh, creates another version or modifies it, it will not be related to the NFT and it will not be able to use it commercially. He will, he will need to produce a new kind of NFT and he will obviously need to request uh, your agreement. So this is, this is, this is a, not a live feature, but this is what we are trying to build and we are talking with artists and management agencies to see how we can uh, create it as smoothly as possible. Thank you. Um, I guess I have two questions. Do, do you do anything around sync rights? And also, in terms of the NFTs and the to tokens, what is the legal framework that you're using and in which countries? Okay, so thank you for your question. First question, uh, we are not uh, working in a synchronized business for the moment. Uh, it's something that we are looking at very like, seriously, but uh, as I told you, we need to onboard thousands and millions of users. So for the moment, if we want to like, create a real interest from the, for the, from the industry for this topic, we need to, first of all, focus our work on exclusive content and new experience related to the NFTs and the token. But yeah, we are really looking at this seriously. So I think that next year we will like, propose something about this topic. And uh, regarding the second question, uh, the legal right that we are using, like the legal framework, uh, is not something like related to law. We have just managed to create uh, a framework with the artists and their managers to see how they could keep control on the piece of content inside the NFT. So today, for instance, uh, as I've told you, hey, you have two market standards. You have the MP3 track file, but you have also the multi-track file. For the multi-track file, we are giving the possibility for people, for artists or producers and beat makers to attach a copyright session to the file if they want to. So. Uh, like in September or October for the release of our new version, we will try something really new. Uh, we will have several beat makers who will sell bits as NFTs to artists and they will let them use it commercially. So this is something really new and we are really exciting about this, uh, this new topic. So yeah, keep connected to see how we move forward on this topic. Hey, yeah, so um, I feel like the as a musician, the streaming aspect is probably the most like straightforward transactional relationship we have with our our fans. Um, but I, it seems like that's like a big hurdle that hasn't been tackled yet. Like even if you think about Audius, like I put a song up, each listen still isn't really transactional. So have you guys solved that or if not, what's the hurdle? Uh, basically, we, we chose st strategically to note 
to, 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 to not assign the listening part of this industry. Uh, we, we think that Audius does it really well for the moment and it's really hard to go against Spotify and all these platforms. But what we think is that tokens can enhance the experience related to that. And what we are trying to build is that with all tokens that you buy on our platform, you will have associated perks. So let's say that you are an artist, you can tell if you buy five tokens, 10 tokens, 15 tokens, you will be able to access this perk, this perks, and this perks. So what we are uh, imagining for um, like the close future is that when you come onto a streaming platform, based on the amount of tokens that you have, you are able to like discover a custom experience uh, that the artist and his team or her team have created. But now, as soon as we are, since we are not trying to build a new listening platform, it's hard to like make a listening transactional. But what we want to do is to give a new experience around the listening. So we will try this kind of things for concert and live venues. Well, what we want to create also is to create festivals and concert with only artists of the platform, tokenized artists, and to, to come into this venue, you will need to be a token holder of the artist. And based on the amount of tokens that you own, you will like unlock custom experiences. Yeah. DMs are open, so if you have any question, I'll be happy to, to answer. Oh, let's, uh, we have another question. Uh, no, it was, it's the next one, oh. just after me, <laughs> right after me. Thank you very much, guys. See you there.